Hi friends, I'm Sachin from Team Decipher and I hope you all are doing well. Well, we'll be discussing today's sculptures which are made of bronze and uh, terracotta along with the orma ornaments uh, Harappan people were using and uh, the clothing styles. Friends, I will recommend you people to take notes of this uh, video discussion. Reason being, if you rely entirely upon the slides which you can download later on, it might not be containing all the information we will be discussing here today because it is containing these things only in the bullet form. Okay, moving on further. First, we will be taking on bronze figures of the Harappan age. These were widely made in the entire length and breadth of the Harappan civilization and these bronze figures were made by a very ancient technique we know the known uh, it by the name of lost wax technique. What this lost wax technique is, a question might arise in the prelims or in any other uh, examination. What we do in this, first of all, we create a model card out of wax then we cover it by clay and this mold is then heated and the uh, wax figure which is covered by this mold is taken out by the hole as you can see over there and once the wax is out of this mold we pour molten metal and after when this metal is settled down we break this mold and we get our final figure okay the famous example as you can see here is the dancing girl from Mohan Judaro the Kali Bangan bronze, bronze bill a bull sorry and the foot which was recovered from Mohan Judaro this foot is actually depicting uh, that it is wearing an anklet and one more thing this is a lesser known figurine which we recovered from Mohan Judaro itself but it is in Pakistan the Karachi Museum but it is uh, you know the preservance and the quality of craftsmanship is not as good as the uh, dancing girl which is kept in National Museum of Delhi India okay we'll be taking on the terracotta figurines these days which largely uh, shows the figurines of mother goddess you know before going into the details of this figure we will like to settle certain things that what actually the large scale find findings of these uh, mother goddess signifies well we have to point out that it shows that uh, sort of cult shakti cults or the divine fertility cult was very much in vogue in the entire harappan civilization which actually uh, represent that the fertility goddess and its worship was widely in use as you can see in this figure this is a red osher ochre uh, covered uh, and the slip is given outline and this ochre polish actually give it the much needed preservance and that is why this figure has survived so many thousand years till this era <coughs> the figure is wearing a short skirt which is tied by waist by a belt she is also wearing two necklaces having four pendants and one pendant each as you can see there the upper necklace is having four pendants the one this is two this is three and this is the fourth one and the longer one is there hanging down and having one single pendant over there these figures were partly used uh, by placing the uh, various uh, you know the parts of the, such like ears eyes and then fixed upon the final uh, figure like these eyes and one of the method used was also pinching method what is pinching method pinching method may what we do look like this is the base of the uh, which is made by clay and we have to suppose uh, make a nose on this base then what we do we'll press sorry we'll press it from this way and this side and this will raise this particular area in the middle and then we can further shape it down in form of uh, nose or you can say we can uh, made <laughs> make ears like this okay okay so moving on further 
will be taking on the pottery of Harappan civilization. Uh, the pottery of Harappan civilization basically can be divided into plain pottery like here which were used for various household purposes maybe for grain storage maybe uh, for storing of water bathing purposes and so on and another sort of pottery which was uh, discovered from uh, harappan civilization is red and black pottery or we call it paint pottery what we uh, what the people used to do for these sort of pottery they make uh, they made a, a vessel out of clay then baked it and uh, they applied the red ochre on the surface as the background and then they uh, by using glossy black paint which was actually derived from magniferous hematite this which is a basic iron ore to draw designs and these designs were tree various geometrical figures and uh, animals and so on well, one interesting thing though the potter wheels do not survive till date just because they were made up of uh, wood but potter wheel were actually used in making of these potteries <coughs> we have already discussed that for what use these uh, potteries were actually serving one interesting pottery specimen which was found in harappan civilization was the perforated potteries these might be might have been used for straining liquor so that suggests that yes our uh, harappan people were also very much uh, fond of drinking and whatever sort of their wine was but yes that suggests the drinking uh, specimen of that era a separate question we will be discussing which uh, might be asked in upsc mains uh, regarding pointing down the specific harappan potteries look these pottery uh, potteries were uh, coated with opaque and red slip which was actually procured from hormuz the in the persian gulf and this ochre was applied very quickly once the vessel is shaped on the wheel so that this ochre may give them the permanent red color and it also sustained for it also you know sealed the pores of that vessel <coughs> which will prevent the undue evaporation so this was something a technically application of the red ochre and on this background on this red background the designs were made with the thick black pigment which was as i told you earlier derived from magniferous hematite which is a raw iron uh, ox uh, ore and uh, you can actually derive raw colors from it which actually uh, lives very last long as we discussed earlier the it made waterproof from inside by preparation applying the preparation made by bituminous bases so the jars which might be used for uh, Uh, containing as a wine container or for uh, keeping water this should not be you know having leakage so to prevent that leakage we use the bituminous bases application so the clay was used from local river where bed it, it was dampened with some sand and it contains mica to give some stability because the shear load of clay will not sustain the Uh, endurance which is actually required to uh, having a sustainable pot surprisingly these potteries which we discussed earlier the shapes we uh, uh, saw they are identical in the entire length and breadth of the harappan civilization and we have already discussed that they were shaped on potter's wheel and we also uh, unearthed some kilns which uh, where we use this these uh, potteries to be baked you know how these uh, kilns were actually um, carried into work we will be discussing by a raw figure look this is the plate form on which pottery was placed and this plate form is having little tiny holes just like some perforated plate form once the vessel is made on the potter wheel they placed it on the this uh plate form and they use wood to bake it and they, there goes the fire 
so it was basically a very controlled and skillful uh, heated vessels we recovered from harappa though there are some specimens which are actually overheated but nevertheless most of them are uh, very skillfully and controlled heating examples which endure the time and wrath of the uh, wrath of the time and we'll be discussing about ornaments as well <coughs> Harappan people use many materials like precious metals, gemstones, bones, and big clay for uh, as a basic material for making ornaments. As you can see there, the metal is specimen is there, the clay specimen is also there. So they were wore both by men and women. The women were having a different sort of additional ornaments like anklets and bangles, which men of those uh, times were not actually wearing. But yes, men were also uh, wearing ornaments like armlets and other things. Moving on, clothes. If we consider this part, and if you remember the beard priest that was recovered from Harappan excavations, he was wearing a shawl wrapped over his right hand. shoulder it suggests ki uh, and in fact this specimens of wool and uh, cotton were also uh, recovered from harappan site so it was spun by both rich and poor well how can we uh, make it out that it was uh, spun by both rich and poor actually the spindles and holes which were made from expensive fans were uh, might be used by the rich people to spun the cotton and wool and which were actually made from cheap clay uh, were used by the labor class or the poor class to uh, spun the wool or cotton so here we are through with the sculpture part of harappan culture and we have covered in its entire length and breadth and in the next lectures we'll be discussing about the next stage of indian uh, evolving culture and that is the mauryan age Till then, thank you for watching, and do visit our website decipherias.com for further information and articles on the topic, and for other topics as well, which will be very helpful for your examination preparation. And please do like us on our Facebook, and the address is given our Facebook page. Till then, thank you. Bye bye, and.